<laughs> my mother, a long time ago, before she died, and she went home to be with the Lord, but she said something interesting to me that I was witnessing to her and sharing with her. And she made the interesting statement that she didn't want to know more because she knew somehow that to whom much is given, much is required, and that the more she knew, the more she would be responsible for and held accountable. And so my mother, in her way of thinking, thought, well, no less, be blessed. And in some ways, when it comes to faith, knowing less is to be blessed. But God desires for all of us to grow up into the nature or the stature of the man of God that we are meant to be. But there comes times when, in sagely wisdom, even as... I was trying to think, I think it's Nathaniel that held Jesus or... Bartholomew, I can't remember who it was that held Jesus just now on top of my head because I'm thinking of so many things, but he was holding Jesus, the baby, and he was blessing him, and he says, now I have seen the salvation of Israel. But at the same time, I'm sure there was a faraway look in his eye as he looked at that baby and held it and thought, oh my God, what's going to happen to this poor child? And you know, when you get old and you look back and you think about the things that you've been through and the things that are still coming yet upon the world, you know, I sometimes wish, you know, that I was like sometimes some of the people that just sit around in mega churches or didn't study the Word of God and maybe, you know, just could be a part of some of the ways that some of these other ministries can do what they want to do. You know, like get involved in politics or just support Israel, right or wrong, or, you know, make up all kinds of cute little Christian cliches to follow and not know. God, personally and individually. Now, I'm not saying mega churches don't or some of these other pastors don't, but I just sometimes wonder in their way of thinking, what happened? You know, where where did they go off on tangent and how did you get there? Because I can't. Now, I know that God keeps them according to their knowledge right where He wants them. You know, they only know so much. So, to whom Little is given, little is required. And maybe that's the way it should be for them because they, they probably have mega responsibilities, you know, and taking care of administrators and monies and churches and people and all kinds of weird junk, you know, that I don't have to deal with. Me, I just have to deal with the truth, you know, and that's really got me into a lot of trouble sometimes because I do know the truth. And I know the facts about how God can make applicable some portions of Scripture to one person and not another, that I do know I can only operate according to what He's told me to do, and the facts of what He's shown me. And sometimes that puts me in a position where I, I kind of go, man, Lord, I feel all alone by myself without anyone else around me. And you know, I almost feel good about that when I think about how Jesus felt when he came to the disciples and he said, eat my flesh and drink my blood or you'll have nothing to do with me. And at that time, 5,000 people walked away quit following him. And his disciples, they were getting ready to leave too. They were packing up their bags. And so Jesus says, hey, will you leave me also? And Peter says, where will we go? You have the words of eternal life. And you know, I like that because I know why I believe what I believe in. I know why I know the facts and the truth when maybe mega ministries and mega pastors are really not right in what they're saying. But they haven't really gone the extra mile to find out at that point in time or have the ability to say to their congregations things that most of them would leave and not follow them. You know, like deny yourself, take up your cross, follow me. How often do you hear that? <laughs> Not too often. Oh, but you know, you still got to provide for your own. After all, you know, a heathen is the worst. Man is worse than a heathen if he doesn't provide for his own. Or is that the way the scripture reads? So, I find it interesting that God is with the humble and the meek. He's with the individual. He's not necessarily into this corporate idea of with corporate America and corporate churches and mega churches and campus ministries and you know canvas ministries and all that kind of mega stuff. You know that nobody's accountable. And very few are responsible, but everybody's got something going because the 
the ball of wax is rolling downhill and the snowball is getting bigger and bigger and you know it can't be stopped. I kind of like my humble abode where I am today, walking simply with God and asking Him what the facts are. And sometimes not answering until I know what Jesus means, what He says, and says what He means. Because you see, I know every single person in that mega ministry or mega church or wherever it may be is going to be one on one with Jesus, just like me. And the great equalizer is that the one on oneness still falls under God's grace and mercy. Because without God's grace and mercy, we'd all be consumed in that. Fortunately, I can share the truth and be accountable for the truth that I relate as Jesus himself has said the truth. But I know, sadly, sometimes I do wish that I could go along with the program with all these other guys that get politically involved, or they get socially involved, or they get into you know supporting some nation, or supporting some cause, or they, they think that they're going to be, you know, blessed are those who are persecuted for justice sake because they're into, you know, setting up a kingdom in this world. And I'm not. Because others may, but I may not. And God keeps me humble and meek because I'm a sinner, or the worst of sinners, but I do know the truth. I do know the facts. And every time that I turn back to the Word of God, I find the truth staring at me and glaring at me in ways that I know I can't follow these other men. But I wish I could sometimes, you know, be just one of the members of the band, you know, taking up my instrument and playing, you know, just like every place else, and being in front of all the people, you know, getting all the accolades, getting all the worship and praise. We will be satisfied with the goodness of thy house. One thing have I desired of the Lord, and that will I seek after, that I may dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my life, to behold the beauty of the Lord and to inquire in his temple. Blessed are they which do hunger and thirst after righteousness, for they shall be filled. He has filled the hungry with good things, and the rich he has sent empty away. He satisfies the longing soul and fills the hungry soul with goodness. I am the bread of life. He that cometh to me shall never hunger, and he that believeth on me shall never thirst. How excellent is thy loving kindness, O God! Therefore the children of men put their trust under the shadow of thy wings. They shall be abundantly satisfied with the fatness of thy house, and thou shalt make them drink of the river of thy pleasures. For with thee is the fountain of life, and in thy life we shall see life. I look around and I can see too much compromise in what people are doing and a lot of things that they want to add on to what God has said. And I personally don't want that. And that's probably why I don't get involved in big mega ministries. Because they wouldn't want me around to tell the truth, the facts, as they are. You know, that you can hear God speak individually and personally, that God wants you to know the Father in an individual, personal way, so real that you could actually hear His voice, and that following His voice, you would not follow the voice of another, but that you would know Jesus in an intimate and personal way, relating Him to the world and going out, and even to the exclusion of your family's criteria, you would do those things that Jesus said to do. You know, not necessarily be a great football player, a great counselor, a great, you know, businessman, a great American dream getter, you know, following the American gold ring, but that you would seek to follow the Lord your God humbly, living in these last days, knowing that the end of all things is at hand, and that the Lord is coming to render unto every man according to his works, and that you should be pursuing the works of righteousness for Jesus' sake, for seeking first that kingdom of God and his righteousness and all these other things would be added unto you that you would need to go on those Christian cruises you know that other people can afford but I cannot you would need to go on those Christian you know trips to Israel or to you know Alaska or Hawaii or couples retreats that cost enough that of course others may but I cannot you see 
I'm one of the poor and needy. And I grew up at the same time as the Jesus movement, and sure, lots of things happened in my life. But you know something? Though the wealthy and the rich are able to do those things, and though I would love to have done those things with them, and rejoiced in all the singing and praising and you know couples retreats and you know Bible studies and Bible schools and things that cost money. I can't, because freely I was received and freely I give. Now, I say, yeah, you know, God bless you. You know, you got the money, go do it. If you got the money, if you've got the mega church and you're enjoying it, go do it. Be enjoyable of it. You know, praise the Lord. God bless you. If you've got, you know, the finances to go be on those couples retreats, you know, that you're paying money out for, or those winter retreats, or whatever retreats they are that you got to raise the money for, you know, and you got to get money, 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 money in order to do the work of God, God bless you. You know, I kind of did the same thing without having to pay for it. I kind of had all those things happen in my life without having any money. I kind of lived, you know, when everyone said I would die. I kind of seen miracles like when Jesus pulled, you know, a gold coin out of a fish. I've seen the things that most people don't see. And I thought all those retreats and everything else was all about that. I hear God speak. I see God move. I know His Spirit. I walk with God. And you know, when I hear about all these cruises, and things that Christians do. One thing have I desired, and I cling to that with all my heart, soul, mind, and strength. And it's the one thing that I've wanted all my life. And so God did. When Jesus spoke to me direct, audibly, I stood there with my mouth open, dumbfounded. Not knowing what to say, not knowing how to be, not knowing what to do. And I was shocked. And <laughs> I shouldn't have been. But let me tell you this. If you desire to put away the world and its things, the toys, the boys, the games, you know, and the Christianese and the Christian way of American Christianity, and you seek after one thing, the Lord. He will be found with those who seek Him with all of their heart. I'm not saying you can't go do those other things. God bless you if you do them, and God does speak to you there too. Because He chooses who He uses, and He'll speak to whom He speaks to. Jesus said, My sheep hear my voice, and they know me, and anyone can hear Him. Which is what this ministry has been all about. But you know, I will never, ever, charge a dime for that which was given to me so freely. I will never ever as I see it now go on a Christian cruise and be waited on when Jesus came to wait on those. I'm sorry but I think we've got backwards all throughout Christianity today as we come to the end of the world that we're not seeking to lay down our lives for each other and serve one another but we're saying, you come to church and serve. I'll serve you by presenting my opinion about things in my format. But I'm really not really kind of like, you know, going out of my way to meet you where you're at. Because if I was, I'd be in your home. I'd be going to your place. I'd be trying to get into your life and somehow minister to you where you're at, as you are, the way you are. But you see... That's kind of why Vigo is here. Those men of God are men of God. There's no doubt about it. And God has called them and chosen them and appointed them and anointed them and put them right where they're at. And people are drawn to them. You know, and God bless them. Go be blessed. Whatsoever the Father has told you to do, that you should do. Pursue it with all your heart, soul, mind, and strength. But you know something? There's a lot of people I find that really are poor. There's a lot of needy people out there that I find that really can't get an appointment with the pastor or the church or the elders or the deacons. As a matter of fact, they don't get visited in hospitals like I wasn't. They don't see, you know, coming visiting them in prison or, you know, doing the things that Jesus said that 
when I was thirsty, you fed me or drank me. You know, it's like, well, no, we 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 got a you know food box ministry. You know, we, we do that. You know, we we don't go way out of our way to look for people. Some do and some don't. But you know, there's always people that will listen to what Jesus had to say and then go do, because poor minister to poor and needy to need. And so, when you are blessed of God, don't put your stock in trade and thinking you're something special because you're a mega pastor of ministry. Rather, go farther out because it only took 12 to reach the entire world with Jesus. And yet, with our mega pastors, we can't even get around the world once with the gospel. So, don't be surprised if it only takes one to minister to one. To meet one need, one heart, one soul, one mind. You only need to really touch one mind. The one that's right in front of you today. The one person that might be poor and needy like I was. It just needed some encouragement, some help, some hope. Someone to say, today, today, I heard his voice and he said, go to that person and tell them about Jesus. So, you know, maybe you already got it covered. Maybe... Sunday's fine and Wednesday and you know you got your studies and you got your cruises and you got your you know all things in the right place, in the right order. Maybe a little old lady crossing the street today might need some help. Maybe today you might need help. Maybe today. God just might reach out and talk to you alone to extend the time with you.